In continuing our exploration of stylistic effects inside of Boris FX Continuum, we're going to take a look at the blur category. So if you're following along with the exercise files, open up the Continuum Avid Essentials Training Sequences bin, and in there, we're going to double click to see blurs. And if we head over to our effects palette, I'm already inside the BCC blur category. We're going to start off by applying BCC blur which is a very simple blur. And if we reveal the effect controls, note that there are only three real values that we can choose from. So we've got an overall blur amount, but we could stylize our blur by limiting it to just the X or Y axis. Now, one really cool thing is blur quality. So depending on the type of lens that you might wanna mimic, right now the blur is set to pyramid, but we could have it be a smoother pyramid, which will have a subtle impact on your footage. Now let's just remove this blur. As in, there are a number of other blurs that we can choose from, which will allow for stylistic treatments. So taking a look at two, I'm gonna head to radial blur, and you'll see when we apply it to the clip, it is adding a bit of a circular motion to the blur that is impacted on our clip. Heading to the effects editor here, we've got two amounts. So if you're used to the idea of a radial blur having some sort of circular shape, look no further than the rotation amount. But then we also have a radial amount, which could change that pattern as well. So in this case, I'm just going to click on the reset to default button so we could see the original values and head to the beginning of the effect in the record monitor. What I'm going to do is increase the size of the effects editor. And now just simply right click to add a keyframe right at the beginning of the effect. And then I'll move inside of the effects editor just to the two second mark where we'll add another keyframe. And this time we'll actually drag the mix with original value, just bring that all the way up to a hundred. So I'm gonna click on the first keyframe you can see a little ramp up there with our blur. Its value is set to zero. So while I have set this blur to kind of act as a blur in transition, keep in mind that in the fourth part of this course, we're going to be covering transitions and there are blurs to choose from there as well. I'm going to remove this effect now that we've taken a look at some of the properties of the radial blur and add my favorite, which is smear blur and smear blur has some similarities to Prism, which we saw when we were looking at distortion-based effects. In the effects editor, notice a smoothness value here at the top. And if I drag the smoothness value down, you'll see less of a stepping amount between the blurs and almost a duplicated pattern of this image. The duplicate pattern is caused by the global transform value. So I'm gonna set this to be quite low and bring down the smoothness even more. And then also play with the scale start and scale end. Now, if I increase the smoothness, there is an image here in the foreground of our two actresses here, which is based on the scale start and scale end value. So the global transform is really a force multiplier effect. And all the things that we're doing underneath in this case can be more subtle or more brash by changing this global transform. And in this case, by adjusting it with our current settings, it allows us to bring these two images closer together. And the minute I start to increase the smoothness value, we get more repeated patterns, which then results in the overall end blur effect. So not only can you adjust this on the center start and center values, you could also rotate the blur here as well to create a really kind of cool smear based treatment across your image. Again, this can be key frameable. We could also just take this blur and use one of several built in blend modes to this effect. So screen in this instance. So we get this nice like kind of repeated pattern without the blur being overpowering on top of our main image. Okay, let's move on to our final blur example. So I'm here on the last two clips here in the timeline. And on the V1 track happens to be a still. 
This is just a shape that was created with particle illusion. More on particle illusion in a later chapter on motion graphics. But we want to use this as a reference in a BCC filter under the blur category called lens shape. So I will apply lens shape to the clip on V2, which I'm now monitoring. And we get a generic blur pattern, which is based on a iris shape that's included. If I go into effect mode, while you might not be able to make this out, we can play around with a few parameters to first off limit the blur so that it, it's affecting less bright values. And another control here happens to be the size of the iris scale. So right now the generic image that's currently being used to produce the blur is what's being affected. Now on the lens shape, the quality that you're going to get by default happens to be fast, which allows us to see the effects of this right away. But if we're looking for something a little bit more accurate, we can switch this over to a quality of sharp and that will have an impact on the texture that we're referencing. Now where things get interesting is under here, this drop down where it says iris shape none. If I set this to be the first below layer, it's now going to reference that particle illusion image. So I'll set it to first below. We can see the pattern currently being produced, but to see it even clearer, I'm going to bring down the threshold even more to about a value of 35 and start to play with the iris scale. So you can now see that texture being picked up. So I'll just, this is the, again, the image that we are referencing and the end blur result. I'll now decrease the iris scale, which by the way, we can affect on just the X or Y axis. And just play a little bit with gamma here, where you can see the impact it has on the lens textures. Let me just zoom in a bit more. You also have controls to feed lens shape a Z map, which will affect how close or far these textures are away from the camera. So in the case of if I had a Z map with black and white information, I could set this mode to on and then reference that layer. Next up, we also have the ability to do a highlight boost on our image and the texture. And you could see the effects it's having on the, the referenced lens shape pattern and our overall image. And just like all continuum effects, I'll go to the beginning here, twirl up the highlights parameter, and notice that under the post category, we could blend this in, or even more importantly, mix this with original. So I'll add a keyframe here at the beginning of the shot, and a few seconds later, add yet another keyframe, where I'll set the mix with original value down to 100%. And just keep in mind, our Actual quality is set to sharp. So if we're looking for a bit of a better playback, just let's just change this back to fast. Where we can see the impact of that blur dissolve over time. And there you have it, blurs inside a Boris FX continuum. We looked at the very simple blur, followed by smear blur for stylistic looks, not to mention lens shape where we could reference external textures.